my name is Michaela Stanislaus, and today I'll be talking to you about the evolution of black hairstyles. So I want you to think to yourself, what do you typically think of when you hear about black hair? Be honest, you probably have heard that is nappy hair, disturbing to look at, looks unreal, and unprofessional. Let me ask you another question. Do you know the history behind black Americans' hair? Or do you even know why a black person considers their hair their crown? Our hair is the first thing many people see. It is a part of our identity and helps express who we are. It is something that has created a lot of controversy and chaos throughout history up until today. Beyond the strands of hair, there is a deep, rooted, painful story that African Americans had to endure in America that many are not familiar with. Hair braiding has a long history of innovation and adaptation in black America, and it is important for everyone to know the history of African American hair, and I'm here to share that with you today. Braids originated in Africa and range in styles from cornrows to bantu knots to Fulani braids to a vast variety of other styles. These styles could take from hours to days, but it was a common tradition spread throughout Africa. These braids weren't just for styles and looks. It was more than what it showed. In Africa, the braids represent your culture and where you come from. Everyone has their own style that helps show who they are as a person. Things that you can see from their hair is marital status, wealth, age, religion, and many other things. For example, in West Africa, they praise women who have long and thick hair. Long and thick hair would mean that a woman is a life force and was good with agriculture and children. If a woman left her hair unkempt, it could mean she suffered from depression or just that she wasn't able to take care of her hygiene. The first Europeans that arrived in Africa were highly intrigued with black hair. They noticed the strong connection Africans had with their hair. Therefore, the first thing slave traders did when they arrived to America with their new shipment was shave their heads. This was the beginning of erasing the slaves' culture and their connection to Africa. When their hair finally grew back, their hair wasn't the same. It became harder to manage because of all the conditions they endured on the plantations. They were in the lack of the resources they normally use for their hair. They had to get creative and use what they could find, like bacon grease as conditioner, cornmeal as dry shampoo, and sheep tools as hair tools. Unfortunately, the use of these resulted in bad scalp infection, hair breakage, and a loss of hair. Many wore cornrows as a way to protect their hair from this. Braiders would also cornrow escape route maps into these slaves' hair. Because sharing typical maps through words or hand-drawn maps wasn't ideal, their only method was to cornrow the escape route maps into their hair. It was a subtle but obvious way to get the maps to be shared. These cornrows show the escapees the roads to avoid. The braiders would additionally hide seeds or gold in these cornrows to help them through their journey and once they were free. Once the 1900s came around, straightening the hair was big. By now, the European straight hair was only considered good, and the kinky texture of black American hair was considered bad. Black Americans began to manipulate their hair often just to stay included in the current trends. Many companies began to produce perms to help black Americans chemically straighten their coarse hair. The Johnson Product Company invented the Ultra Wave for Men, a hair straightening treatment made with an alkaline formula that was a gentle product for consumers. There was also the G.A. Morgan Hair Refining Company. Their products were also made up of alkaline chemicals that straighten hair. This product helped alter the hair color and texture of African American hair. It basically helped the hair look very close to European hair. Black Americans would have done anything to have that good, straight hair and somehow belong in society for once. In the 60s, the Jim Crow laws also made it difficult for black people to enjoy their full rights as citizens and secure employment. Black Americans did everything to conform to society ways, but when the 60s came around, many black Americans became tired of being turned away because of their hair. During this era, the Black is Beautiful movement involved. This movement was all about embracing all of your physical aspects. Marcus Garvey, a political activist at the time, stated, Don't remove the kinks from our hair. Remove them from your brain. This started to pursue the idea of rejecting Eurocentric beauty standards. 
People a part of the Black Panther Party and outside wore their hair mainly in afros during this time. The afro signified self-empowerment and activism. The transition from chemically straightened hair to the afro was a big step because we have gone through centuries of being told our hair is unacceptable. Their long, thick hair was embraced in its natural state, and it made them stand out more. Their froze got bigger and better, and they were here to stay, and no one can stop that. By the 80s, afros were still important to the culture, but black Americans ventured out into new styles. Styles that started to develop during this time were the high top, jerry curl, curly perms, and new styles of braids. After the Black is Beautiful movement, they loved their hair more than ever, and they were going to show it off. However, the whites were still strongly against these styles. They started to see how much power their hair gave them and took action into their own hands. Many work settings continue to deem these hairstyles as unprofessional and discriminated against workers. Places like the Hyatt Hotel chain specifically had terminated black female employees who wore cornrows. In 1989, these females were told they needed to change their hairstyles because it doesn't fit the dress code, but they refused. They brought the discrimination case to court, but were dismissed. There was a law at the time called Patterson versus McLean Credit Union, which stated that employees could not bring a civil rights case against an employer for racial discrimination that took place after they were hired, which is why their case was unsuccessful. The styles would range from micro braids to long locks to chunky braids to pixie cuts, and you will also see a lot of straight hairstyles. Throughout the past, black Americans tried to get away from straightening their hair to fit in. At this point, they more straightened their hair for their own satisfaction and found a much healthier way to straighten their hair as a result. This method is called the silk press, and it is a temporary hair straightening technique that uses little to no products and heat. This healthy alternative helped blacks stay away from discrimination in a way because they had the ideal hairstyle. Others who didn't straighten their hair still encountered discrimination, which was difficult, but they definitely did not stop wearing any of these hairstyles. I finally would like to bring us to the current day that we are living in. All of these styles that I mentioned and more are presented in beautiful ways. For many years, we had to combat discrimination against our hair and stop falling for white hair trends. Brown Act, which stands for Create a Respectful and Open World for Natural Hair, established in 2019, was passed in California, which then became the first state to ban natural hair discrimination. But only seven states have enacted this into law so far. Regardless, we still receive discrimination for it today. Let's look at a specific example. DeAndre Arnold. According to CNN, in 2020, he was a senior at Barbers Hill High School in Mount Bellevue, Texas, and was at risk of not going to prom and possibly graduation. Arnold had locks in his hair, and when it reached a certain length, he got in-school suspension and was told about the possibility of no prom and graduation. Arnold and his family were struggling to combat this problem because he did not want to cut his hair. Arnold's situation got to a point where it was brought to social media, and that's when things changed. Many black leaders in our current society spoke out and supported him. The superintendent of Arnold's district did not like the negative attention, so he made a statement that the whole situation was false. They still did not change the policy to this day. They just made an exception to release some of the heat they were getting. Black Americans definitely received a lot of criticism for our hair and the styles we do, but it doesn't stop non-black groups from adopting them as their own. For example, Kim Kardashian wore cornrows in 2018 and she called them Bo Derek inspired, in reference to the hairstyle worn by a white actress in the 1979 film 10. So many people outside of the black community praised her for this style. It was innovative, beautiful, trendy, etc. It made everyone want to take part in these styles. But in all reality, black Americans have been wearing this style for centuries. Today, people are appropriating black culture without understanding the true meaning behind the behind the hair we carry on top of our head and they think of it as a style way they can hop on and ride which is why I want you to keep in mind what I talked to you about today. So the next time you see a hair trend, consider the culture and meaning behind the style and try to find a way to appreciate it then appropriate it. And know that when you see an African American walking down the street with confidence, just know they are holding our painful history in their crown and they are proud of how far African Americans have come.